This week on NCTV, we continue our series on the history of U.S. presidents. This week, we learn about America's 32nd president, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Much thanks to our friend, Trousdale County historian John Oliver, for his help with this report. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, that's a, that's a prosperous name of it, if I've ever heard one, comes from an old New York family, and they're quite wealthy, and of course, as you know, he was related to Theodore Roosevelt. Born in 1882, our nation's 32nd president, and what makes him unique, if for no other reason, the only president to serve more than two terms. He served not only three terms, but started on his fourth term. So he, uh, from a prominent family, fifth, his fifth cousin was Teddy Roosevelt, and uh, he grew up, uh, uh, like I say, surrounded by wealth and, and, and all around New York. Uh, attended Harvard University, where he finished in only three years, so he's very smart. Um, married Eleanor Roosevelt, who was another cousin. She was also a fifth cousin. Uh, she was uh, uh, quite smart herself, and we'll mention her a little bit as well. But he, uh, he did this over his mother's objections. His mother didn't approve of the wedding, but they got married. And uh, because she had, uh, you know, in essence, been orphaned, both her parents had died while she was young, she was given away by... Theodore Roosevelt, President Roosevelt. So the auspicious uh, beginning right there. He entered politics early, uh, running for a New York State Senate by 1911. So you see he's right on the road there. And he uh, uh, and then uh, and did well. So in 1913, he was appointed by President Woodrow Wilson as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, a very prestigious job. And then in 1920, because of all this attention, he, he runs for Vice President of the United States under the ticket of James Cox. Now, you never heard of President James Cox because James Cox lost. But, the, but still, you know, they say there's no such thing as bad publicity. His name was out there, and, he's, and he was a very good speaker. Uh, but, but Cox did lose. Now, interestingly enough, in 1921, he contracted polio. Very, very bad disease. Uh, and it really injured his legs. And, of course, his legs would continue to get worse as he got older. He almost dropped out of politics because of that. Because, like, you know, here I am, I'm disabled, you know, and, and using crutches. But his wife, Eleanor, said, no, no, so you're, you're too capable. You need to continue. And so he did. Um, she was a very good strength in his early marriage, very, a very intelligent person herself. Um, so then he runs for governor of New York uh, in 1929. He's elected. And this uh, uh, surged to 1933 when he runs for president the first time. He was, this is during the beginning of the Depression. And he was very forceful in his legislation, which, which, which helped New York do better than some other states, but also got national attention because of what he was doing. Of course, New York, a big state, you know, an important, an important state. So he literally uh, runs for president, and, and he's like, there's no competition at all because he's running against Herbert Hoover, whom everyone blamed uh, for, the, for the Depression. Whether he was wholly to blame or not, it's dependable, I mean, debatable. But he uh, hits the ground running. I say it figuratively because he couldn't have run. But... Uh, right away, he, he calls something the New Deal. He goes on the radio. He, he gives uh, excellent speeches. He has fireside chats. Uh, while he is president of that first term, he creates a social security system. He uh, ended prohibition, which made him very popular. He appointed Cordell Hall of Tennessee as secretary of state. And of course, Cordell Hall uh, from Carthage, Tennessee, or actually in Jackson County in that area, and then lived in, in Carthage for a long time, uh, was the longest serving secretary of state America's ever had. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was also very instrumental while this happened. She, she works particularly with social issues. Now, uh, she's best known for, in 1939, uh, when the DAR refused to let uh, black uh, Marian Anderson, who's a soprano, perform in their Constitution Hall and because she was black. And so Eleanor Roosevelt stepped in <laughs> and has her perform at the Lincoln Memorial in a free public uh, performance, which of course garnered all kinds of publicity. Now, interestingly enough, that made a big impression on black Americans. Then, later on during World War II, Roosevelt himself was very good on making sure that African Americans were given equal hiring opportunities in war industries. That's interesting because that turned African Americans from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. Republicans fought both of those things. The Republican Party was the party of Lincoln, and for years they had the black vote. It changed under Roosevelt, largely because of the efforts of his wife and himself to make sure that blacks were included and um, put into some, some of the uh, segregation that we had. Uh, so he runs for, in 1936, he runs for re-election, 
and it carries every state that you, every state but two, Maine and Vermont. <laughs> Good old Republican states there. Uh, during his second term, there was a slight slowdown in the economy. He had a little more struggle to get reelected. Um, conservative elements were fighting him a little bit harder, too. Um, but he wins. This time, he only carried 38 of the 48 states in 1940. So then in 1941, what happens is Pearl Harbor. And that completely, completely changes the whole scope of everything. Now he's not just pulling us out of the Depression. We're fighting a war. But he leads the presidency, the state and country, through difficult times. It really weakens his health, though, the real drain on his health. But it's worth a note that most Americans were not aware of his disability. Now, they're aware that he had polio, but they didn't realize the severity of it. And what they would do is they made him ride around in an open car. He didn't have to get out. Uh, also, the media did not focus on it. They deliberately, out, to be polite, didn't focus on it, didn't even mention it. And so when he made speeches, he wouldn't get up to it right before he made his speech and be kind of helped to the podium, lean on the podium and so on, uh, and very careful about things like that. Uh, they were more polite to the president than, than, than they would be today if, he, you know, if anything happened. He was the uh, first president to serve a third and then, of course, start a fourth term. Uh, traditionally, and this goes back to George Washington, presidents only served two at the most. There was no law, there, is no, there was no law prohibiting that. And George Washington, there were people who wanted him to, to literally stay forever, stay to death, and he refused to do it. He said, no, this is, this is a democratic country. I'm going to serve two times. And then traditionally presidents just kind of did that. Uh, there were some, a few presidents who never got their second term. They weren't reelected. Uh, but generally, even if they had a second term, they, they stopped right there. Roosevelt stopped that. Of course, he was in the middle of the Depression, you know, and, and they needed him. And he was doing a successful job. It's interesting that Maine and Vermont never did vote for him. <laughs> he never, he never, never won them over. Uh, so he ran a fourth term, like I say, got elected. I'm sure he would have stopped there, presumably. But then the Congress came in a year later and said no president can have uh, more than two terms. However, that's just, that's just a law. That's not in our Constitution. And Congress can go back in and change it again if they wanted to. We, I don't perceive them ever doing that, but we never know. He was a gifted orator. And during War II, like I said, he his, his gave great speeches. One of his most famous speeches is the Four Freedoms. And they were, he thought that every American and as well as every person in the world should have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. And of course, freedom from want is poverty. Freedom from fear is war, you know. And the Four Freedoms, <laughs> still a good thing to talk about today. Um, Americans were unwilling to change presidency, the president during a war. So he runs again in 1944, is reelected. But it wasn't long after that, just right into 1944, uh, that he uh, dies. Uh, he had gone to Warm Springs, Georgia, which is where he often went, because the Warm Springs were good therapy for his legs. And while he was down there, he suffered, uh, I think, a coronary uh, stroke like that. Um, earlier in his, in his, in his marriage to, to Eleanor, she found out he was having an affair with his secretary. And his marriage never recovered from that. She never trusted him again. Uh, and actually, as it turns out, uh, one of the women he had, his, his secretary, was president of Warm Springs, Georgia, when, when he died. He was, he was continuing in a relationship with her. But uh, their marriage suffered for it, and they never really got back together again, even though they had six children. And she, uh, and she continued, and she had a, a great life after his death, uh, even becoming a representative of the United Nations. Today, he is ranked as one of our greatest presidents for what all he did. Usually, if you look at rankings, and it doesn't matter who's doing the ranking, he almost always makes the top five. A, a great president. Well, he's very, very liberal, uh, very encompassing of all Americans. He was very much for the little guy. And even though he came from a very wealthy family, and of course, typically in the past, the Republican Party was the party of wealth. Uh, big business. He was not that way. He, uh, some people uh, go back to some of the people he was influenced by as a young man. Uh, his father died when he was young, very close to his mother. Uh, and uh, uh, even some preachers that he had uh, about um, thinking of the little guy and uh, making sure that big business recognizes the little guy. Very big with unions, very popular with the unions. Another reason that he did well as president and got elected again and again. Uh, that would be his biggest strength. And, uh, and of course, he wasn't scared to, to, to be bold uh, in, in taking on issues and uh, threatened, threatened to uh, uh, see, add more people to the Supreme Court to get them to the Supreme Court to agree to some things he passed, uh, but it fell short of that. But uh, yeah, very forceful. Yeah, not, not scared to, 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 to take on the challenge. Yeah. Next week, we'll learn about America's 33rd president, President Harry S. Truman. 
Reporting from Hartsville, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.